Well, good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to 12 News at Noon. I'm Nick Canizales. Well, let's go ahead and get right to the weather where Mother Nature continues to rain on Southeast Texas. Jeff is in the Storm Tracker Center with the very latest. Good afternoon, Jeff. Yeah, good morning. It looks like a good afternoon. It looked like we were calming down this morning and then we had a flare up with some more showers and uh, a few isolated thunderstorms uh, moved through campus. A fairly wet morning. Now, as you look at radar, pretty quiet. There's not much going on. Most of the activity is now over in the southwest Louisiana, out in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we'll zoom in. You can see a little bit of rain up there towards Deweyville, Mauriceville, and uh, we've had still a few sprinkles around the triangle here. They don't show up very good on radar, but there is still a little bit of light rain out there. That should taper off here fairly quickly, and we're hoping for a little bit of maybe of some sunshine to break out a little bit later on this afternoon. Uh, as we quickly look at the allergy index, it's up today. Weed, grass, and mold all at medium uh, on the allergy index. Forecast calling for rain chances the next few days before we uh, kind of power into a dry weekend across southeast Texas. We're going to be talking more about that in our seven-day forecast in just a little bit. Well, this morning, Jeff Bezos shipped his most important package yet himself into space, and it was right out of the Lone Star State. The Amazon founder launched from West Texas to the edge of the space this morning. Blue Origins crossed the boundary between the atmosphere and space at 62 miles above the Earth. He was joined by a crew of three. His brother Mark, aerospace uh, uh, pioneer Mary Wally Funk, and Dutch teenager Oliver Damon. Funk and Damon are now the oldest and youngest people who have gone to space. West Texas desert and we were able to witness all of it happen just a few minutes after its scheduled 9 a.m. Eastern departure time. Blue Origin's new Shepard rocket lifted off successfully going 62 miles above the surface of the earth carrying those four passengers Jeff Bezos his brother Mark 82 year old Wally Funk and 18 year old Oliver Damon on board giving them about three to four minutes of weightlessness before bringing them back down to earth via three parachutes for a nice soft landing in the West Texas desert. Blue Origin had 15 unmanned test flights before this. This was the first manned flight. And as of right now, everything went according to plan. They were greeted back down on Earth uh, with another crew member running up to the capsule, everyone giving a thumbs up before being walked outside to incredible cheers. Right now, Blue Origin says they plan to have two more flights this year reusing the very same rocket. Morgan Chesky, NBC News, Van Horn, Texas. People across the world came to the tiny town and this sign was causing some extra traffic. It's a mural of billionaire and Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos and his rocket ship. Hoberson County officials say that the town is booming with space tourism and a local artist wanted to pay tribute to Bezos and his team. Switching gears now, State Representative Joe Desitel attended a virtual town hall hosted by the Jefferson County D Democratic Party. Representative Desitel is one of the Texas lawmakers in D.C. as they work to push federal voting legislation. He says that crossing state lines was in the best interest of his constituents and that the perception that lawmakers are not working while in D.C. is hurtful. It is a little a little disheartening to hear people uh, say that, you know, you're running away, you did this and that, that and, and none of that is really actually what's going on. Put more hours into legislative issues in the last week than probably in the last year. Well, this week, the Texas House Democrats are planning to meet members of the U.S. House of Representatives virtually as five of the representatives tested positive for COVID. Relief for renters concerned about eviction. The Texas Supreme Court has issued a new emergency order extending an eviction diversion program launched in the response to the COVID pandemic. It was set to expire a week from today, and the new order stretches the grace period until October the 1st. It also allows the judge to postpone the eviction for 60 days if a landlord has a pending application from the tenant or if both parties say they want to participate. To be eligible, you must have to have an active eviction case in a household income either at or below 80% of the median income in their area. Well, six people are in the hospital after a home explosion in Northeast Texas. Plano Fire Rescue say the explosion happened just before 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Three of those hurt were kids. 
Now, the explosion was reportedly felt by people as far as a mile away from the site. This morning, Plano Fire Department and Atmos Energy also will be back out there to figure out exactly what caused that explosion. Well, we are getting closer to the Tokyo Olympics as opening ceremonies kick off this Friday morning as Japan has seen an increase in COVID cases. The IOC President Thomas Bach spoke today praising medical workers and volunteers for making the games possible amid the rising COVID cases. He says that the event would send a powerful message of peace and solidarity. He led the IOC delegates in a minute of silence to pay tribute to health care workers and those who lost their lives to COVID. Now, the games were postponed last year due to the pandemic, and this year they'll be without spectators due to Japan's state of emergency. Bach also said the World Health Organization Director General will be in Tokyo tomorrow. Now, a public health expert says the bubble that meant to control COVID-19 cases in the Olympic Athletes Village in Tokyo is not doing the job, posing a risk of the infection spreading. Now, he says insufficient testing before people came to Tokyo and the inability to control people's movements could cause the spread of the COVID Delta variant. Last week, the IOC Olympic Committee president said testing and other COVID-19 protocols would leave zero risk of games participants infecting residents in Japan. You know, visitors, athletes, journalists, delegates, um, of course, they are supposed to be within the bubble, but, uh, you know, it's not working well. And, the, you know, it's obvious that uh, bubble system is kind of broken. Uh, so there seems to be some sort of interaction between you know, guests and visitors and also local people. The public health experts said declarations like that only serve to confuse and anger people as actual conditions on the ground are, quote, totally opposite. And remember, KJAC is Southeast Texas home for the Olympics, and we are kicking off the opening ceremonies Friday morning, July 23rd at 5.55 a.m., and that is just three days away. Prosecution began today to hear a Beaumont murder case. Now, prosecutors say Tristan Jackson shot and killed 43-year-old Darrell Howard early Easter morning in 2019. It happened near Concord in Delaware. Jackson reportedly confessed to police after they arrested him. A second suspect was never charged in the case. 18-year-old Jamon Scott has been arrested in connection to a Port Natchez New Year's Eve shooting that left two people injured. Police arrived to a large party near Cypress and Live Oak Street on December 31st around 11 p.m. after reports of a shooting. Officials say minors and juveniles were at the party where there was a, quote, large amount of alcoholic beverages. Scott is now behind bars in Jefferson County being held on a $100,000 bond.